Okay, so let's wrap up this chapter two. So we got 2.5 right now. And 2.5, again, you're going to hit up systems. But we're actually going to we're gonna kind of like do a little bit of chapter one and a little bit of chapter two. So we're going to go back to chapter one and we're going to do graphing of linear inequalities. Okay, so we're going to go back to graphing lines um, and and all that jazz. Uh, but they're going to be inequality style this time. And then we will also do systems of linear inequalities. Okay. So we'll have two of these that we'll graph at the same time and deal with. So that's really what 2.5 is. And that wraps up chapter two for us. Okay. Um, so let's review some things real quick um, about you know, what we know here. And again, we're going to be heavy calculator on this. All right, lots and lots of calculator usage. All right, so remember, in order to put this into the calculator, you got to make sure that you have y by itself. And don't forget that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality sign. Okay, so here in a second, we're going to get this y value, this y variable by itself. And again, we know how to do that. All we're going to do is add or subtract x to the other side and then divide by the number in front of y. Again, when we divide by the number in front of y, if it's negative, you're going to end up flipping that inequality sign. So be on the lookout for that. Okay? So now, a couple things. Because we're working on an xy plane, so we're working on a graph like this, we don't have open or closed circles. Okay, you are drawing lines. So when we are dealing with this, in order to represent open and closed circles, we do what is called a solid line or a dotted line. And you can always determine the solid line or dotted line from the very beginning. Because all you got to do, and it doesn't matter um, which direction the symbol is pointing, if you are equal to you're always a solid line. So we know right away this line is going to be solid. Okay? Even if this flips and goes the other direction, it's still going to be solid because it's equal to. So you can always tell that from the beginning of your equation. All right? Now, next, all right, so you got the solid and dotted. So that's going to be some of your questions that they're going to ask you about. Because graphing in IMATH AS, uh, it doesn't graph solid or dotted lines. So they rely on a question where it says, hey, this line right here, is it solid or dotted? Okay, and this line right here, is it solid or dotted? So they're talking about the inequality symbol. If it's equal to, it's solid. If it's not equal to, it's dotted. Okay, so this line will be solid. So now let's take and let's get y by itself up here. So we're going to subtract x. And that gives us, I know this is kind of weird. I'm going to be writing it all over different places over here. 4y less than or equal to negative x plus 8. And then all we're going to do is divide all the numbers. Because remember, there's really a negative 1 right there. We're going to divide all numbers by 4. Okay? So in the end, the equation we're dealing with is y less than or equal to, because we don't flip, the bottom number's positive, negative 1 fourth x, and then 8 divided by 4 is 2. So again, notice my equation it's still going to be a solid line, okay? And now that you have it in slope intercept, you can put this into the calculator. So let's go to our calculator. And we're going to push y equals, and we're going to put in our equation. Alpha y equals negative 1 over 4 x plus 2, okay? And then you hit graph, and there's what the line looks. And it's solid, too. So this is perfect for us. We like that this is solid. All right? So that's what the line looks like. Now in your assignment, 
oops, skip the page. Here's that same problem that we just had a second ago. So that's that same equation you just saw a moment ago. You already know that it is solid. I spelled that wrong. I was like, this looks weird. Solid line. Okay, just make, yeah, I spelled it right over here. And it's y less than or equal to negative one fourth x plus two. Okay, now these directions say graph the line. Okay, and then down here it says, where's the graph shading? We'll get to that part here in just a moment. But remember that when you graph this down here, there's going to be that toolbar that has the clear button over here. And then over here, you got your line tools. There's your line. And then it's got the circle and the quadratic and then the dot for the point, okay? So remember I, taught, I told you a couple ways that you can deal with this. You can graph it by hand just by clicking on the line button, okay? And then all you gotta do is, is basically it's two clicks. Okay, that's all you need in order to do this graph, two clicks. Click on the line tool, and then you come over here and you graph. And remember, you can graph this according to slope intercept. The slope is negative one fourth, which means you go down one to the right four. And then the intercept is two. So we can plot the two, because remember that's Google Maps finding us. And then this is Google Maps directions to grandma's house. Now look at this, it's counting by twos. So if I go down one, it's not all the way down here to zero, zero. Down one would actually be halfway because this is the number positive one, okay? So down one to the right four. And if I wanna go down one to the right four again, just kind of repeating the process, up one to the left four, up one to the left four. So here's our line. Uh, close enough. Okay, that's the line they want graphed. Now remember, there were other ways to do this that you could have gone to the calculator and used second graph and gotten the table. And then you could choose your values that you wanna graph, like using four one. Kind of scroll back up, do some things here. Zero, two, four, one. So if I come out here, and graph, here is zero, two for my first click. And then here is four, one for the second click. Or if you looked at your table, you could have scrolled up some, oops, and done negative four, three. So again, here is negative four, comma, three. So you could have used the table to help you get it. So either way, whether you use slope intercept or whether you use the table, either way, you got to graph the line. And once you select the line tool, it's two clicks from there to get your line. And then now, let me show you how the calculator is really going to help us. Because down here, this is going to be a two-piece answer. It it's either says that you shade above or you shade below. Okay? And our calculator is going to help us out with that. So that's the last part. You're going to talk about where do we want to shade? Because remember, on a number line, we either shade it to the right of the open circle or closed circle or to the left of the open and closed circle. The same thing's going to happen here. So we want to know, are we shading up here above the line or are we shading down here below the line? You will not actually shade on the graph. That's what this part B question is for. Okay. Now, let me show you how the calculator is going to help us out with that. That's the piece that's below here. So first things first, use your calculator to help you get the line graphed. Make sure that you're in slope intercept, which you've done before. We did that all in chapter one. Okay. And then now the graphing calculator will tell us where to shade. Here's how. If you are greater than or greater than or equal to, we're going to select this triangle that says 
that's basically, I call this the top triangle because it's kind of like shaded on the top side of a square here. I call this the bottom triangle because it's, if I make like a little square here, it's shaded on the bottom side of the triangle. So the top triangle goes with the greater than symbols. The bottom triangle goes with the less than symbols. Now, where do I find these symbols? In our graphing calculator, if you go back to Y equals, scroll all the way over to the left. You see how my color and my line is highlighted? Hit enter and a screen pops up. On the screen, you can change the color if you want. So you can change it to red, black, magenta, green, orange, brown, navy, light blue, yellow, white, although white would be hard to see, light gray, medium gray, gray, dark gray, and back to blue. So you got your choices of lots of colors. Okay, down here, the line is what we are talking about. So we're going to scroll to the right or to the left. It doesn't really matter. So scroll to the right. Hey, there's that top triangle. Scroll to the right again. There's that bottom. So I can scroll back and forth, and I want to pick which one I need. So our equation is a less than. Okay, so see, it's that less than. So we're going to come over here. We're going to choose the less than symbol, which is the bottom triangle. There it is. And we're going to scroll down and say, okay. Oops. Too many times I hit enter. There we go. Notice it says the bottom triangle. Here's our equation. If you go back and hit graph this time, now you see it's shading. And now we can answer the question. So when we come over here, are we going to shade above or below? And the answer is below, because our graphing calculator shows that all the shading is below. And there it is. That's all we're going to do in 2.5. Just sometimes we might have two of these that we got to graph at the same time. OK, so let's go through. Let's take a look at some of the problems. So this is like what the first problem in your assignment is going to look like. This is going to have you graph an inequality, a linear inequality. OK, graph it using slope intercept or just once you've got it in slope intercept, use the table to help you get the line and then use your graphing calculator to help you figure out where to shade. When you're ready to put in a new equation, just come over here and just keep hitting clear a couple of times and it will clear everything out. Notice it fixed my symbol over there, too. OK, and now you're ready to graph a new one. So let's go to this next case right over here. So what they have given you is you actually have three pictures here, okay? And all the shading is up here, even though it looks like it's missing some of it, but the shading is there, I promise you. So all the shading is up here. All the shading is down here. So you got three graphs here. They want to know which one of these matches these graphs. So you've got seven equations over here. Some of them are already solved for Y. Some of them you will have to manipulate, okay? All they want to know is which one of these seven is this graph? Which one of these seven is this graph? Which one of these seven is that graph, okay? So let's start with A, and I'll show you how this works. Y is greater than or equal to X minus 2. So this is already set, ready to go. I don't even know why I rewrote that up. Let's just zoom back into this. So this is already set, ready to go. So let's just go to our calculator and look at what it, you know, look at the graph and see if it's going to match any of my pictures. So we're going to go, we're going to put in X minus two, and it's a greater than symbol, which means that I want to choose the top half triangle. Also notice all these are equal to, so all the graphs are solid. So if any of these were dotted, then you would know that you could throw out an equal to answer. But all of these graphs are solid lines, so it makes sense that they're all equal to's. So we're going to put in x minus 2. Okay. Yep, x minus 2. And it's greater than, so we need that top half triangle. So that's the one that we want. That's a horrible triangle. So we want that top half triangle. Okay. 
So we're going to go in here, scroll all the way over, and scroll down. There's that top half triangle. Scroll down to OK. And then now we're ready to graph. So there's what it looks like. So let's take a look at our pictures first off to see if we have any graphs that are shaded up here. Also, if you notice, um, it looks like there are some tick marks missing. They're actually there. It just happens that one of our shading here, one of our blue lines that's vertical here, is actually covering that tick mark up. So there really is a one here. So a couple things you could also do is also pay attention to your intercepts. Notice this has an, a Y intercept at negative two. This has an X intercept at a positive two, because remember there's a one there. So if we go back and look at our graphs, hey, this one has an intercept at negative two and positive two, but it's not shaded above. So this obviously is not A. Let's take a look at this guy. Hey, this one has an intercept at negative two, positive two, and it's shaded above. This guy is A. And then you stop right there and you move on. Okay, because that guy is good to go. You now know that A was out here. It was actually the second graph. And it can't be the third graph because if you look at this, there's no negative two, positive two intercepts. Okay. So we now know that this guy is A. Easy peasy. All right, so now we look at the next one. Again, we're going to have to take this, and we're going to need to get Y by itself. Okay? So I'm going to move this 2 away from the Y. So what you will have there, I don't know why I put a minus X there. Silly me. I'll have X minus 2 greater than or equal to y. But remember, we like this where y is actually on the left side. So remember what I taught you, that whenever something is written backwards with an inequality, you can just merry-go-round it. Remember the center of the merry-go-rounds right here, and everybody's going to switch sides. And if everybody switch sides, what happens to my little greater than or equal to when it turns around? It switches directions. So there's what equation B really looks like in slope intercept. So we're going to go in and we're going to put this in. So we come in here and we got X minus two, but this time we need to change the triangle because it is a less than triangle. Now we need the lower triangle. Oh, cause it is less than or equal to, we need the lower triangle. So if we go back here and hit graph, Hey, there it is. And again, notice the intercepts, negative two, positive two, and it's shaded below. Hey, wait a minute. I remember that. This guy has a negative two and a positive two, and it's shaded below. This has to be B. Okay? So now, one of these last five is going to represent the last guy. You guys know how to do that now. You know what's going on. So some of these you're going to have to fix. Like C is one that needs a fix. D needs to be fixed. E is good to go. And F and G will need to be fixed. Okay? And once you get these into slope intercept, you just graph them and see if it looks like this picture, if it has that same information. Notice some things about this guy. You know, notice that you have a point right here at zero, one. You've got a point right here at negative, or sorry, not negative one. Positive one, negative one. Notice you got another point that's down here at two, negative three. You got one more point that's over here at negative one positive three. So whichever one that you graph up here, make sure it has those kind of points that it's going through. And again, you can check the table for that. And then you just got to make sure that it graphs on this side of the line. Okay. Easy peasy. You got this. Use that graphing calculator to help you out. Okay. Come back here, clear that out. So that's what the second problem in your assignment is going to look like. They're going to give you three graphs. They're going to give you about seven equations. And they're going to say, okay, 
Who is it? Who are these graphs out of those seven? And again, for this guy, because it was a less than, we chose the lower half triangle. Okay? So keep an eye on that information. All right? The third kind of problem you're going to get looks like this. They're going to say, here's a graph, and they want to know which two inequalities represent this information. So this is what a system of inequalities graph looks like, okay? And I'll tell you why it's shaded right here in just a moment. So the first thing is, you know, you got to figure out which one of these four equations are these two lines. Just worry about that first, okay? Cool part is, is that three of these are good to go. The only one that's not ready to go is this one. Okay? Notice, though, that the y is on the opposite side. So we need to turn these guys around. So Mary, go around this. And this is what you're really looking at. Mary, go around this guy. And this is what you're really looking at. Okay, this one needs a little bit of solving, which we'll do real quick. So 1x plus 2y greater than or equal to 0. So you need to subtract 1x because we got to get y by itself. So that gives you 2y greater than or equal to negative 1x because zero plus or minus anything. It's just itself. And then all we're going to do is divide by two. So this equation is y greater than or equal to negative one half x. If you want to put plus zero here, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. But normally we don't show it, but there's nothing wrong with saying plus zero. And the same thing up here. If you wanted to right here, you could say negative one x plus zero. And then zero divided by two is still zero. Same thing. And then this one, it's ready to go. It's all good. So this guy's good to go. Okay? So I'm going to graph these one at a time and see which ones match my graph up here. Okay? So I'm going to graph this guy. So we're going to put 1x minus 1, and then we're going to choose the top triangle. So 1, or excuse me, 1x minus 1. And I'm going to come over here, and we're going to choose the top triangle. There we go. And graph. All right, so let's take a look at some things. So it looks like we've got an intercept here at negative 1 and an intercept over here at a positive 1, and it's shaded up. Let's see if our graph looks like that. Intercept at negative 1 intercept a positive one, and it is shaded up above it. Even though there's no shading over here, I will explain that here in a moment. But this line right here is definitely one of my lines up here, is one of these two inequalities. Okay? So let's go in and let's graph the next guy. Okay, so we're going to put a negative 1x plus 3, and we're going to choose the bottom triangle. Okay, so negative 1x plus 3, and we're going to choose the bottom triangle. Just make sure it was negative 1x plus 3. Yep. All right, so we hit graph. There we go. Let's take a look at some features. There is a 1 here, just so you know. So it looks like it goes through at a positive 3 and a positive 3 over here. Let's see if our picture looks like that. Positive 3, positive 3, yep. And it shades down below, and this graph has shading down below it. Even though there isn't any shading down here, it really is there, just so you know. Okay, so this line is actually the other guy. So we don't have to worry about the bottom two. We don't have to worry about the green. We don't have to worry about this one down here. These are the two inequalities. Let me show you them together on my screen up here. Okay? So let me put the top one in, which was 1x 
minus 1, if I remember right, 1x minus 1 in top triangle, and the other one is negative 1x plus 3 bottom triangle. Okay. Negative 1x plus 3. So all we got to do now is fix their signs. So this one is the bottom triangle. Scroll up. This one is the top triangle. Now I want to show you what this looks like in all of its glory. All right, hit graph. And there it is. So what you're seeing over here in this picture, this is the solution set. Okay, how do I know that this is the solution set? Okay, because what happened when we graphed, this was my blue line, and it shaded up here. This was my red line, and it shaded down below. When you're dealing with two inequality systems, the answer lies where you have both colors. Where is it that I have both red and blue? And that's in here. That's why you only see this section shaded on the graph, because red and blue make purple. That's the solution set. That's the solution to this, because that's where both of these have shading in common. Both of them have red and blue in this section. If you look at my graph, where's the purple area? Right here. There's my purple area, which is the section that is shaded over here. We don't, sh we don't show the section where that has just the red and the section that has just the blue, even though our calculator will show that. What we want is where there's both colors. And red and blue combined make that purple section that you're seeing right there. That's the solution, and that's what you see right there. Okay? So that's why you only see that shaded section and not all of the shading like the calculator shows you. But again, remember, when you're solving systems of inequalities, we want where the two colors combine together to make a new color. So red and blue combine together to make purple. Okay? So that's the third question you will see on your assignment. They're going to give you a graph and they're going to say, okay, which two of these down below make that graph? Take them piece by piece and see which one matches those lines that we had above like I just did for you. Okay? And then last but not least, the last four problems will be like this. They'll say, okay, here are your inequalities. They want you to tell us if this one is dotted or solid. Tell us if this one is dotted or solid. You already know that right away. They want you to find the intersection point. So like up here, this would be the intersection point right there. And you know how to find that using second calculate at intersection. Okay. So you go down to intersection and you scroll over to the intersection. Scroll over where the two lines cross. And all you're going to do is hit that enter button three times. One, two, three, and there's the intersection, two comma one. That's what would go in these blanks. And then down here, it's going to ask you where it's shaded. And now it's going to give you four choices. It's going to say above, not up. We'll say above, below, to the left or to the right? Come on. Because your graph is going to make four regions. An above region, a below region, to the right region, to the left region. So if we had to pick on this, we would say it's shaded to the left. Okay? So it's either above, below, to the right, or to the left. That's how this problem is going to work. So let's do this problem. So again, you can answer these two questions without even graphing. So if you look at my sign right here, is that solid or dotted? And the answer is solid. 
we can answer this guy real quick. Based off of that symbol, it will be dotted. Now, go to your graphing calculator, put both of these in, and figure out the last two answers. I should have had you just pause the video a second ago and do all this. But go ahead now, pause the video, use your graphing calculator to plug this in to figure out the intersection, and then figure out are we going to be above, below, to the left, or to the right? Where is the solution? Where do the colors overlap? And go. Okay. So we have already know that this is solid and dotted. We don't worry about that. So these are both ready to go into the calculator. They're all y equals mx plus b, y equals mx plus b, although the b in this case is a zero. That's fine. So we're just going to go to our calculator. And we're going to put those in. And they both want the bottom triangle. So I'm going to come over here. I didn't, I didn't uh, really clear out the second one because it already had the bottom triangle in here. So all I'm going to do is come down here and just clear that piece out. So notice the bottom triangle, bottom triangle. So we just got to put in our equations. So they were 2x plus 4. 2x plus 4. And then this guy is negative 2 thirds x. Yeah. Alpha y equals negative. Oops. That should be a 3. And up here there should be a 2. Negative 2 thirds X. Hit graph. There they are. We need to know what is this point of intersection right here. Okay. So again, hit your second trace. Go down to intersection. Scroll over to the intersection and you're going to hit the magic enter, enter, enter. And there it is. So negative 1.5 comma 1. So negative 1.5 comma 1. And in this one, it says you can round to the nearest hundredth. So that decimal is perfectly fine. OK? So it's OK to have decimals on this because it says round to the nearest hundredth. There you go. So there's that answer. And then last but not least, are we going to shade above, below, to the left, or to the right? Look at this. Here is the shading. So is it above, to the right, below, or to the left? And hopefully your answer you just said was below. That's what the last four problems are going to look like in your assignment. Okay? And that, my friends, wraps up Chapter 2. That is Section 2.5. Have fun.